Now, in its 25th year, its silver anniversary, the Philippine Mathematical Olympiad is going back on site in various test centers across the country after two years of online competitions. After its trial run in 1984, it was officially launched in 1986 and has been held annually since 2007. The country's contestants to the International Mathematical Olympiad are chosen from the top students who compete in the Philippine Mathematical Olympiad. The PMO is a project of the Mathematical Society of the Philippines and the Department of Science and Technology Science Education Institute, with official airline partner Cebu Pacific, and major sponsor Foundation for Upgrading the Standard of Education Incorporated. Good day, my name is Emmanuel Balete, a former PMO contestant. Welcome to the PMO video series. Today, we will be talking about the binomial theorem. What is a binomial? Simply put, a binomial is an expression with two terms. For example, x plus y is a binomial because there are two terms x and y. The binomial theorem is concerned with the powers of binomials. Uh, if we start with x plus y raised to 1, then that simply evaluates to x plus, x plus y. If we, so, uh, if we expand x plus y squared, then as most of us are familiar with, we will get x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. If we go on to x plus y cubed, some of us may be familiar with this formula. Um, if not, we can also solve this as x squared plus 2xy plus y squared times x plus y, and then expand. And we should get x, x cubed plus 3x squared y plus 3xy squared plus y cubed. Now, if we go up again to x plus y raised to 4, um, it's, it, we'll notice that it's starting to become difficult to do this computation manually because there are now lots of terms to, ex to, to expand. And if we, if we carefully do the expansion, we should eventually get this long expression. And clearly it's not feasible to continue finding the powers of binomials in, by manually multiplying. So the binomial theorem, uh, with the binomial theorem, we want to try to find a pattern among these expressions. Now, to help us see the pattern, I've colored the coefficients in red. So the, for the first four powers, I colored the coefficients in red and the variable parts in blue. First, let's look at the variable part. There's a clear pattern here, right, which is, um, you always start with x raised to n, and then you end with y raised to n. And for the terms in between, each, each step, in each step, you simply reduce the power of x by 1 and then replace it with a power of y. So x raised to n, x raised to n minus 1 times y, x raised to n minus 2 times y squared, and so on. So the variable part, uh, as a pretty easy pattern to observe. But what about the coefficients, the red part? Now, this one might have a less obvious pattern. Uh, we see that there's 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 3, 3, 1, 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. Some of you may recognize that these are the numbers in the Pascal's triangle. The Pascal's triangle is an arrangement of numbers, um, in arrangement of numbers with some very interesting patterns and properties. So you you see that again, there's one two one and one three three one here. And how do we form the Pascal's triangle? In every row, you you start by putting one as the first number and as the last number. So the first numbers always the first and last numbers are always one. And for the numbers in between, you simply take the sum of the two numbers above it. So 1 plus 1 is 2, 1 plus 2 is 3, and so on. And with this, we can now um, 
find the, the full expansion of, uh, for example, x plus y raised to 5. By using this pattern that we found, first we write the variable parts. So start from x raised to 5, and then write out all the variable parts until y raised to 5. And for the coefficients, we just look at the fifth row. So that's 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. And that's it. If we add these terms together, we can check that this is indeed the expansion for x plus y raised to 5. Uh, as an exercise, try you can try to write out the full expansion for x plus y raised to 6 using the Pascal's triangle. Now, this is uh, nice, but it's still not a very good uh, formula because it's still going to be tedious to solve for the nth row of the Pascal's triangle. For example, if we wanted x plus y raised to 10, we'd, al we'd already need to write out a lot of numbers to get to the 10th row of the Pascal's triangle. Thankfully, there is a nice property with the Pascal's triangle which is you can actually write all the numbers as combinations in an interesting pattern. So we can see, for example, in, the, in this fourth row, the terms are just 4 choose 0, 4 choose 1, and so on. And if you solve each of these, you will indeed get 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. If you are interested about how these patterns how to prove these patterns, you can look up uh, resources online. So now with that, we can state our binomial theorem. x plus y raised to n is simply the sum of n choose i times x raised to n minus i times y raised to i, where i ranges from 0 to n. So this part is your coefficient. We take the numbers in the nth row of the Pascal's triangle, so n choose i. And for the variable part, as we mentioned earlier, you start at x raised to n going down until y raised to n. And that is our binomial theorem. Now, let's try to use the binomial theorem to solve some problems from the PMO. Here we have a question from the 21st PMO. What is the constant term in the expansion of quantity 3x squared minus 1 over x, all raised to the 6th power? I encourage you to pause the video first and try out the problem on your own. All right. How can we use the binomial theorem here? Well, we can directly expand this expression um, by using the binomial theorem. So 6 to 0 times 3x squared raised to 6 times negative 1 over x raised to 0. Note how we write negative 1 over x instead of just 1 over x because we are, use, we are subtracting the terms in the binomial instead of, uh, uh, instead of adding them. Okay, and the next term in the expansion would be 6 choose 1 times 3x squared raised to 5 times negative 1 over x raised to 1, and so on and so forth. We can list out all, the, all of these terms and take note that we don't need to simplify all of them because the question really only wants the constant term. And the constant term is the one which is multiplied, which is not multiplied to any to any x. So the the x should cancel out for that for that term. So instead of expanding, doing all the computation, we can first check which which term here will actually be a constant. And if we look at the powers of x, we will notice that only this one, only this term, will have the x cancel out, which means this is the constant term we want. And if you simplify this, you'll get 6 choose 4 is 15, 
3x squared is 9x raised to 4. And negative 1 over x raised to 4 is 1 over x raised to 4. And you're simplifying, that's 135. So our answer is B. Now, what if the question uses a larger power? For example, what if instead of raising to the 6, it asks for the constant term in the expansion if we raise to 15? Oh, no. Now, it's not a good idea anymore. It's still doable to write out all the terms in the binomial expansion and then check which one has a constant term. But that will obviously take up a lot of time. So let's try a different method. So let's say this is 15. Let's try a different method of finding the constant term. We take note from the previous slide. We, we have this neat way of writing the entire sum. Or basically, we know that every term in the expansion can be, writ can be written as 15 choose i times 3x squared raised to 15 minus i times negative 1 over x raised to i. Essentially, what we're going to do is first we'll solve for i such that this term will be a constant. There could be more than one value of i, um, but the, the usefulness is that we first pinpoint i so that we don't have to write all of the other terms, which aren't constants. So how do we figure out i? Well, since we want it to be constant, we just have to look at the powers of x. So if we ignore the constant parts first and simplify the power of x, here you'll have x raised to 30 minus 2i times 1 over x raised to i, which simplifies to x raised to 30 minus 3i. There. So for in order for this term to be a constant, we need 30 minus 3i to be equal to 0, which means i should be equal to 10. So constant only when i is equal to 10. And there we have it. We now know that the constant term will be 15 choose 10 times 3x squared raised to 5 times negative 1 over x raised to 10. I encourage you to try using this method as well to solve the original problem, which where the exponent is 6 instead of 15. All right. Now, let's look at one more item, this time from the 18th PMO, which is slightly harder. We are asked, how many terms are there when the expression x plus y plus z raised to 2015 plus x minus y minus z raised to 2015 is expanded and simplified? Again, I encourage you to pause the video and try out the problem on your own first. All right, we notice that we cannot use the binomial theorem directly here because this is a trinomial. There are three terms. It's no longer a binomial. But what we can do to, in order to apply binomial theorem is to observe that the first term here has x plus y plus z, while the second term can be rewritten as x minus quantity y plus z. So there's a common y plus z between both terms, which means we can let y plus z be a variable. So if we set w to be y plus z, we can now think about the number of terms instead in x plus w raised to 2015 plus x minus w raised to 2015. And there you can apply the binomial theorem. So x plus w raised to 2015 by the, binom by the binomial theorem, this is 2015 choose 0 times x raised to 2015 times w raised to 0 plus 2015 choose 1 
and so on and so forth. And all the way until 2015, choose 2015, times x raised to 0, times w raised to 2015. And if we do the same thing for the other term, we'll notice that the expansion of both is very similar because the only difference really is that you replace replace w with negative w. That's really the only difference between these two expansions. And now let's think about when that distinction will actually, uh, when will it actually matter? Okay, so for example, if we look at the, so we have these two binomial expansions. If we look at the first term of both expressions, the first term, oops, it's usually a darker color. The first term, this one and this one, they are just the same, they're identical. The, the use of negative w doesn't affect the second term because you raise it to zero. And however, if we look at the next one, if we look at this second term versus the second term at the bottom, we notice that they are different or they differ in sign. They have the same term, but they hate, except for the sign. And you can easily check that for the bottom expansion, the sign is simply alternating plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, because the negative W will stay negative only on an odd numbered term. So every other term at the bottom will be will have a negative sign while on on top on the first expression everything has a positive everything has a positive sign so what happens if you add them together if you add them together then the negative ones on the bottom will cancel out with the ones on top while the ones that are positive on the bottom will be doubled because there are two copies. So their sum is just two times 2015 choose zero times um, x raised to 2015, w raised to zero plus 2015 choose two. Note that we take, we take 2015 choose two because um, this term already got canceled out. So we skip to the next term and plus so on and so forth until 2015 choose 2014 times x raised x sorry times x raised to one times w raised to 2014. So this is the result of adding those two terms. And what do we get? We have 1007, no, sorry, 1008 terms. And yay, that's it. We're done. 1,008. Wait, are we done? No. So we're not really done yet because the original question isn't asking about, it's not asking about this expression. We want the expression in terms of x, y, and z. So this one is actually wrong. We're not yet quite done because we need to substitute back w for y plus z. So again, we already have this expression, the sum of x plus w raised to 2015 and x minus w raised to 2015 is two times this summation. So it looks a bit complicated, but if we substitute the first few values of i, uh, maybe you can quickly notice what this is trying to say. So that's 2015 choose zero times x raised to 2015, w raised to zero, Plus, if i is equal to 1, this is 2015 choose 2, x raised to 2013 w squared, and so on and so forth. And the last term is 2015 choose 2014 times x raised to 1 times w raised to 2014. So you can check. Um, this is just a shorter way of writing the same expression we found here at the bottom. All right. 
So we've got this expression and we want to substitute W equals Y plus Z. Now note that once we do this substitution, we won't be we won't combine the terms from the different um, terms here because for, for instance, um, if we take the second term, which is 2015 choose two times x raised to 2013 y plus z squared. And then the, the term after this, which will be 2015 choose four x raised to 2011 y plus z raised to four. We note that when we expand both of these, we won't be combining any terms from each other because they have different powers of x. So whatever expansion you get here and expansion you get here, you won't, you won't be combining any terms between them because the powers of x are different. And this is nice because what this tells us is that to get the total number of terms after substituting, we can just add up the number of terms in each expansion. Because we're sure there are no more like terms which will get combined later on. So we just need to know how many how many terms are there in the wait, I'll just erase everything. Okay. So um 2015 choose zero, x raised to 2015. For example, how many terms are there in this expansion? There is one term. How many terms are there in this expansion? So this becomes, we can replace the W. Oops. So the W will be replaced with Y plus Z. And this one will give you three terms because Y plus Z squared has three terms. Next, 2015, choose four times x raised to 2011 times y plus z raised to four. This one will have five terms. So we notice that the only thing deciding the number of terms is really the power of w. Or if you notice, this is again an application of the binomial theorem. Because y plus z, um, y plus z raised to n will always have n plus one terms by the binomial theorem, because you start at something with y raised to n, and then you end with something that has z raised to n, so or times y raised to zero. So there has, there has to be n, there's always n plus one terms. And thus, if you look at this sum, so the general term, which is 2015 choose two i, these parts aren't really important. The only important part is y plus z raised to 2i. This must have 2i plus 1 terms. OK, so if you add them all up, you're just really adding up 1 plus 3 plus 5 all the way until 2015. And you can compute using arithmetic series that this is 1,008 squared, or 100. No, 1016064. And that is our answer. So thank you very much. I hope you learned a lot about the binomial theorem. And I hope to see you again in some future PMO video. Goodbye.